Problem is, Trippy just trying to wait too many things at once. What's going on? Welcome back to the week flow. It has been a while. I'm currently here in the new home office, which is pretty sick. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through what's been happening at Gemflow. There's so much that's been going on in the past couple of months. Team has been increased by a huge amount. Lots of new stress, lots of new problems, lots of new opportunities. So much to tell you guys about. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sean Hanif. I'm the CEO of a company called Gemflow, where we help creators become entrepreneurs. And we do so much in that, that it's just getting bigger every single day. With that being said, hit the subscribe button, like this video. If you love content about business, about entrepreneurship, about how getting stuff actually done, you're gonna like this video. You're gonna hear from me and my team, and we're gonna get into lots of different things, and a full company update is coming in this video. Plus, you'll be going with me to my meetings and everything else that I do, speaking with the team, clients, and I actually have a board meeting as well this week. So yeah, lots to cover. Sit back, enjoy this video, and let's get to work. end of June. It's mad. It's because it's been like six months since the funding and that's a long time. What time do you call this Carl? I didn't break his leg. Yeah, it's just the only thing he could probably sell is like alcohol or saying these like new drinks or energy drinks. Something that he can basically pop in his music video is the only thing that would work because that's his lifestyle and he's still doing club appearances. He's frozen in a very funny way, like half standing basically. I actually made a list on the weekend, just all the things I guess I need to solve, which I'll put at the top. Some of it's actually there from before, which is not great, it's still not done. But yeah, I guess I would actually like for us to focus together this week on the things that we know we need to like resolve, that we kind of just kind of don't. Because I think we should focus on fixing what we know we need to fix or improve. So we actually start moving ahead. The other one I think just to solve is a mega overhaul. That's the same thing. So like all the landing pages for all of them, we should just start the work. And I think you could probably do it in isolation that you could just work on it, James. Send it to me, I can review it. And then we just, it goes straight to dev basically. Let's not overcomplicate it. It's like all the content that we should be making for the app and the rest, all that needs work basically. So just so everybody knows on Lemai's team, we're turning it into a normal like team now. There's three devs and Lemai, we're gonna, pick one thing to solve and get the whole team to work on it to solve it together. So if that's marketing integration or if that's whatever, whatever, whatever. So if there is any pressing things, just flag them. So we focus on it and we get it done. Just, just to touch on that, sorry for my side, I think we need to slightly slow down on the hiring from this point. I think there's enough hired to take stock. So how do that means like hiring a junior apparel person? I personally don't think we need it anymore. We need to utilize the team and get them focused on the right stuff. So, the way we should execute, in my opinion, is that I would scrap the scheme and we should just find people, pay them, do the content, move on to the next one, move on to the next one, move on to the next one, and going to people who are good content creators to create the right content, it can go on our page and they also post it. Or like reels based content, right? I think we need to test to then do it. We should put some money behind it, get 10 people. We could probably just gift a lot more product and people would just share it. Just need to make it a bit more ex 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 experiential, is that the word? So for AJ, the first time we did it, we basically, we did it that you get a glove and you have to punch and break the box and then take the t-shirt out. So it was like a bit of a thing. Then we get into a habit of like, you know, each month there's like official guides coming out and underneath the workouts, challenges, recipes, like little things coming out consistently. So it's so much new content coming that people are like, wow, it's worth staying here. All right, so just finished off with a bunch of phone calls this morning. Currently, it's about half two. Good call with the leadership team before. I'm just working through everything we need to do this week, high priorities. To be honest, I've um, a lot of things that are on me right now to fix in the company. So I'm just kind of going through that and some I need the team's help with. Then a good call now with um, Grace Beverly for Shreddy. And I'm just going through like what are the rest of this year and the strategies a lot of things we're working on so it was a good one-to-one uh, -one with her just to kind of break down some of the stuff that we're working on and when does what need to happen and I guess the truth is we're just learning and growing so much um, as Gemflow and with our clients just become more data-led more driven by numbers rather than instinct instinct gets you so far which has definitely got Gemflow and its clients so far 
but at some point you need to actually start looking at data that gives you the answer. An example would be looking at like churn, for instance. Churn is when someone, how many people are leaving the app um, or a subscription business, I should say. In, that, in this case, that could be um, for a mobile app. Churn, you can look at it from an average point of view, which means uh, how many people generally leave a product. Or you can look at more of a cohort basis, which means if 30 people came last month, how many people, how many of those left? That gives you a bit more detailed analysis on like how people are behaving because you could have lots of people that were happy six months ago but then some people new people may not be as happy so yeah pretty cool um catch up there the day continues i think i have about 30 minutes now i need to catch up on emails and uh, yeah lots of other calls and in the background the team is doing lots of different things i'm in the content team and i'm going to take you behind the scenes on a shoot today yeah they just want to see me in the grave come out the lot in the rave Yo, good, good. Getting through the day. How about you? Yeah, but they don't know. That's actually, that's actually we really need to do write that that process down one evening. Enough that the guys can start doing their jobs. If, if they were fully onboarded, they'll be able to manage it. Um, I think just need to stick to one thing at a time. That's why, isn't it? The problem is just trying to do way too many things at once. In the end, the goal you can ask for, then it's a dev thing to figure out like how to get there. But if you fix this, it takes one second for the data to come through if you publish it. Page views working. That's because the pixels on the website. View context working. Purchase is working. But order completely should be working. Unless on the find they don't get it is amazing. I was down bad in the basement. I will pay the guy for a placement. I was never patient. Hey, what's going on? So it's uh, been a long day, but we're still here getting it done. Quarter past eleven. Um, so yeah, basically um, I stopped around probably about eight. Had some food and stuff. Spent some time with the family. And now I'm back working again. Right now I'm about to do something um, that's been on my, I guess the team is waiting for me to complete, which is the following. So we've created a tracker, what we call a brand tracker, which is analyzing everything that happens on a brand and um, with um, some cool data validation in there. So it shows us what's wrong. What I mean by that is for us, we track everything essentially that happens from the creator all the way to the brand and then everything inside it. What I mean by that is so creator A, What's the social media um, activity looks like? You know, how many posts are they doing? Are they growing? What's going on? How many times do they promote their stuff? The mentions, how do they do it? Then how much traffic comes on to, you know, the brand um, social media account or if that's the, the website, what do those, those people do? How many of them buy or subscribe? Do they come back? What's the repeat purchase, retention, everything else? And then see what where the problems are. It's quite obvious when you see like, oh, the, the conversion is low on the landing page, we need to do something. The truth is that we don't get that much time to sit and optimize everything, but now because of the team that I've hired, we now can do that. So what I'm about to do right now is actually just kind of create some looms on um, how we, how the team can access all the data from different places. You can export a bunch, bit of it's manual. Um, so yeah, because it's across many different sources at the moment, just because of the amount of different services we use. What's going on? So in this video, I'm going to be going through how we fill out the tracker. So we're here, we go to new purchases and trials. This new, new subscriptions is combined of trials and purchases. So what you need to do is you need to go select segment, here's trial period, and now it separates. Amazingly well. So you select your dates, then week, under new purchases. So just to put it here. And then at the same time, new app subscriptions are 527. Great. So here we have our daily active users, weekly active users, 28 day active users. So daily active users is 3,200. Oh wow, look at that. So since November, 43% six months later are still here. So yeah, I guess our retention rate at six months is 43.87. But yeah, that's pretty much where you would get these numbers from. You can read what you saw in the day. I was down, I'm up to the play. Pack up a hiss, cause you know I can play. We gon' win it no matter what the shirt. Got the stick, we gon' bring it out the shirt. It's silver stay. What's going on? So it's the next day. It's been a busy morning so far. It's currently early afternoon. I'm about to quickly jump on a call now with uh, some of the marketing team to actually talk about our first ever Genflow campaign. It's absolutely crazy that to date we've done no marketing. We've just started doing some social media stuff. So if you haven't checked out at Genflow, 
underscore on Instagram, check it out, creating some new content. But yeah, first campaign, gonna sit down with the team and um, they've already put a plan together, gonna discuss it with them and start figuring out how shall we promote you know, entrepreneurship, creators becoming entrepreneurs, how do we get that feeling out there that this is what Jump is about as a brand and what we believe in. Gonna jump on this call now with the guys. Let's do it. And then we have like a more artistic one that isn't so literal, just talking about ownership and getting people backed up on, on ownership. How's it going guys? Just joined. So yeah, I guess the goal is to do two things. The reason I say two because I feel like the execution should be slightly different. I feel like we need a a top tier brand video just which is more about the feeling and making you feel about entrepreneurship and being a creator and what's that like. Because I think that will send the message of like, oh, okay, we're, we're like a cool brand now. Um, then at the same time, one thing that is a bit more exact to what Gemflow does and how it does it would be more useful. We use them for two separate things. So the top video will be used for just brand awareness and it's just like a cool thing. And the second thing can be used for actually to send to like a client to be like, this is what Gemflow does as like a mini video that kind of shows it in a cool way. And I don't want that to be, hi, I'm Sean, I help you build a business. And then is like, hi, I film your content. Not that, not a corporate how video. We need to just do it in a cool way that shows a, a, how we build someone's brand by kind of like putting the pieces together. I think let's focus on like the overarching video first because that's like the, the cooler thing. Um, and I, I think the focus needs to be being a creator and doing their own thing. So essentially selling being a creator. We want a creator to watch it and be like, yep, these are the guys that understand what it's like being a creator. So I think that's the thing that will attract the market towards us is if that message was good. We want to basically make it look like to a creator that we understand you. This brand is for you. Gemflow is for you. That's, I guess, the key message to get across uh, from a messaging point of view. This is some of the other stuff I've been working on, but essentially this is where we are now on the left. Currently, we help creators launch direct to consumer brands. That's where we are. What we're building here at Gemflow, and you'll see this once I'm done with it, is a, a creator platform, which means it could be direct to consumer brands, it could be education, it could be tools for creators. I kind of see that as the hero video of this is what Gentle is, this is what we do. And then to kind of complement that is the Fraser's idea of the ownership video, which comes down to what you were saying, everything you just said. So where a creator says that I love whatever, then I went on to launch this. So I think that's something that every creator will be able to resonate with, with like all the, all the work you put in you know, this is a new type of career and all these things that you grew up thinking that you shouldn't do and now it turns out that you've, you know, you've got this incredible career from it. They solve two separate problems for sure. One is brand, one is what do we actually do? Yeah. And we do have two problems today, both of those. So yeah, we can solve one at a time, but yeah, those are two separate problems to solve. Obviously, I'm keen on doing more brand because it's cooler. Our app development team are growing massively, so I thought I'd go and try and find Tim and ask him some career advice for someone starting in coding. So I think my best tip is that you really need to love coding. Coding is an opportunity to create without limits, and you need to truly love that, because if you do, it will show in everything you do, whether that be the work you create, or interviews, or anything. If you love creating, and you can demonstrate that, you will get a role. So how do you do that? Look online, be up to date with the latest trends, and build something. If you've got nothing in your portfolio, it shows that you don't really want to do it. And likewise, if you've got something creative, clever, unusual, using the latest tech, that will go leaps and bounds beyond any CV. So what's going on? Just about to jump on a call now with Thomas, who is our head of product management. Basically, he manages all our apps, websites, and projects from that perspective. Alongside Tim, who's our head of uh, development as well. Uh, I'm just gonna jump on a call with him now just to talk through a bunch of different process things. Should be a good call, I'll be looking forward to it. We need to figure out. So we've actually hired a new um, QA team and it's about figuring out like how they can really assist us um, and what are they doing. I just want to get an update and figure out if the process is good enough. I love getting involved in the detail to kind of see how it's working to then know, okay, that's why I can trust this process. 
more so than just leave it to somebody. I like them, I like people to go and do something, but then go in and be able to check and be like, okay, I'm happy with this approach and this makes sense and the rest of it. So yeah, that's the plan now. It's currently three o'clock just before this. I actually was just doing some board report um, work with Carl. Um, but yeah, about to jump in this now. It's probably about an hour. Let's get to it. So I think it'd be good to kind of map that out with you. So like from the moment, you know, a client wants a new piece of content to go inside an app or a website, like what should happen, basically. I want to do it, what we do on the product, like physical product side, that the, the timeline is shown to them. We give them like tangible updates. And that's the problem today. That's the mistake that they're just, we're just not doing that to be like, keep pushing back, they don't understand why. So if you just sell that upfront, that hey, you fill a guide out, what's going to happen from here and what things need to happen in which order for it to be like, if stock is not in the warehouse, no one ever says to us like, why are we not going live tomorrow? <laughs> you know, it's the equivalent of that is what I, is the goal. This really in reality is going to be loads of these coming in like this. Smooth. Like cognac, I'm a big threat, yeah. I just came to sight to see and get your bitch wet. Oh, that's a big flex, huh? Stock going up like six eggs. You see the drip, wrist wet. Heard somebody said that I ain't made a hit yet. Had to hit them back with a quick text. Shit, couldn't tell from these big checks. Oh, yeah, nay rose, and I'm back at it. Yeah, back at it. Yeah, back at it. Up and what are you guys doing? So, we've changed the color of this tee to be like a ribbed neck band. Um, just because it has better recovery when something's like ripped, it's tighter. So for a t-shirt, it just helps sit cleaner on the neck. Whereas previously it was um, a self-fabric, just the self-fabric jersey. And then obviously when you pull something over your head, it stretches. So the recovery is not so great. So when it sits on your neck, it will kind of ripple. Cool. I'd say this, this is a sample for one of our brands. Yeah, this is um, a final pre-production sample, just been approved by the client uh, a minute ago. And now we're going to proceed into production and yeah, get the brand launched. Nice. And what do you normally do when a sample comes in? So we check it with our team. We have um, our garment tech uh, who measures, uh, checks against the factory measurements, make sure everything's to spec, any discrepancies we raise to our team. Uh, in China or in Portugal and basically make sure everything is as it should be and then make comments from there on to improve the fit or get things remade and then liaise with the clients to make sure their feedback corresponds with our feedback and so forth. What's happening in the wholesale team? Okay so um, we are gonna go into and we're just putting together some mock-ups of the change of packaging across 200 stores in the UK. So it's our first really big deal for Gemflow, uh, so it's really exciting. And we're talking with lots of other wholesalers. Yeah, at the minute we've got Holland and Barrett, Beauty Bay, and hopefully Sainsbury's. Lots going on at the moment. And how do you start conversations with wholesalers? Um, at the minute we've had a few reach out to us and some of the others were working with agency groups or we reach out to them via sort of LinkedIn um, and email them and send them over their information that way so. Do you have any like super quick tips for someone if they did have a brand and wanted to try and get into wholesale? I think making it sort of targeting the customers which you think the brand is more aligned with is probably the best way to go about it um, and make it, make sure your brand is sellable in those stores you want to go after so the pricing's right um, your wholesale margins are right because they're going to want to really have a really large margin of like 65 percent so you've got to make sure your costings are fine and you're safe on that to make sure that you can sell it into them and still make money at the end of it all right so I just finished up with a call with Mary um, we currently work with her um, she's based in LA so she has a business called the Slate app very exciting we actually also manage social media and do a bunch of other stuff so it's a good call to catch up on all things marketing actually I'm another call with them tomorrow on some other stuff but yeah always good to hear good feedback they're loving Gemflow and everything everything so far so good to hear so yeah with that being said it's time to get back to work Round round by myself, mm. be fine by myself. Mm. I don't need no one help, mm. I don't need no one else. Mm. Build it by myself, mm. bird being from top shelf. Yeah, I don't need no one, I don't need no one. Mm. Round round by myself. Mm. How's it going, guys? Good? Good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good. Good? Yeah. See you. I didn't call. All good. So, just got to Pizza Express, gonna go have lunch with these guys, and then we gotta get ready for the board meet. 
the truth is, from where we were before funding to now, the way we're working is so professional. Like this new Lean app. The fact that I didn't design every screen, I wasn't in every single call, is such a big step for the company. It's the last 20% now that I need to spend time. I don't realize I need to teach. Like, generally, I need to teach how to look after clients, how to do this, what to do, even commercial strategy, what to actually do, because I realized that even with hiring new people, I still need to teach. I guess what this means in simple terms is not that people can invest in our brands, mm. essentially they can invest in anything we, we, we think is investable. So for example, where I think this is very exciting is that imagine you can invest directly into a YouTube channel because you can just put that as the asset that we are trading. It should be looked at as a platform in itself, yeah. not just for our brand. We're not just trying to raise money for our brands. I would see this as for the creator economy, which is becoming a thing, uh, something that's been released today that two billion has now been invested in the creator economy. Like this is the new, what social media was, what e-com was, and the creator economy is going to be that next. That's what the whole industry is talking about. Don't got no heart, I got an icebox. Ran a roller, swap out a G-Shock. Moving slowly, I know the street hat. No more double, go ahead and detox. Yeah, yeah. Came from the trenches, they ain't showing us no lows. Dagging in the city, I be wanting was a hug, yeah. We on the block like every night to catch a buzz. Get the cash and tell my family out of the hood, that's a must. What's a hood, baby, with no soldiers. Bad past never left my mind, it's taking over. No, I should have died, that's why it's hard to stay sober. Glad to see the sun, but my heart getting colder. Life's so crazy, what we been through. When you die, the only time that they gon' miss you. Tell my mama, no more tears, no more tissue. We were just on hood, baby, with some issues. All right, first of all, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I think this month for me personally has gone really fast. I was looking at my slides and thinking most of the stuff there is still relevant as it was last month, so not too sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I want to touch upon our goals as every single month, which is what are we trying to do, and um, which is that we need to grow our mega and macro brand. We're doing a bit more analysis into data and coming up with an actual plan per brand from this point because yes it's not all about acquiring new clients and launching new clients we need to make sure our current clients consistently grow which lots of you have a huge um, part to play in you know her year one she did 100,000 year revenue year two was 700,000 year three was one point I think four million so having that year on year growth is one of the hardest things to do in business in general and we have to do that across our portfolio of brands so it's something that we need to take seriously. Also, it's a new challenge for us to grow a brand from 1 million, 2 million to 5 million and hopefully 10 and more. Third goal is build our brand, acquire new clients and just be more known in the creator economy. As I've said, um, every, I guess, meeting from now, we are not an agency. We are a creator platform. We use that platform to launch brands. And on top of that, we provide some additional services um, to amplify the brands that we launch and um, it may at times feel like um, we're an agency because we have a number of different people that we work with and so forth but that's not what we're meant to be doing hence why we don't compare ourselves and we're not in the market of who's like the biggest agency in terms of service level work what we want to be is um, a platform in the creator economy and this is the early stage of that just to touch upon what I'm talking about, so today we work with, the way to think of it is that we have already launched our enterprise model and we've not launched our normal model as a business. What that means is that we're working with the large clients, which are the large creators today, which are our clients, and we do this one-to-one -one white glove service for them. Long term, the goal is that we open our platform, our way of working, that it becomes more self-service that the micros in the world and all the wannabe influencers like the low-end micros essentially can do it themselves. Um, that's the goal. So we're not, uh, we don't aspire to be the biggest agency in the world. We aspire to be the biggest platform in the world. Trying to run and automate as much as we possibly can through software. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so part of that is then we need to start building that brand and starting getting that message out to people. You've seen some stuff like we're just doing the Gemflow Instagram, 
We've uh, planned the first campaign. So it's the end of the week and as I promised at the start of this video, gonna give you guys a quick update on how everything has been going for the past few months and the truth is that it's actually been quite hard. As you know, obviously I raised money back at the end of the year. There's been a couple of vlogs and a couple of week flows since then. But you know, as, the, as you're trying to push and grow a business and almost like double the size of people, if not more, and do everything else, it has been tough. Um, just because I underestimated how hard it would be not to hire the people, obviously that was a big job in itself, just to kind of put a whole recruitment process in place to be able to hire 30, 40 people so fast, but actually being able to onboard them and get use out of them. Because imagine like your expenses and everything's gonna just gonna go up and up and up, right, as you get hire more people and be able to then actually get value out of that. I underestimated that. So that's been a, a new challenge for me, it's been a bit tough. Um, I think one thing I've learned and the takeaway for anyone watching would be, you can have a process which is very for like the people that currently work for you and they will understand, to have it in a way that someone can walk in and be able to absorb everything you do to your standard for whatever reason you do it in your way and then be able to add value, that's quite hard. And I think to fix that now, we're developing like more thought out, almost like operational manuals, rather than, um, I'm, the, the, it's like literally when you go to Ikea and you're gonna get something and anyone in the world can use that to build it, almost that way, there needs to be foolproof process. Visual, videos, everything. So I think that's something that I've um, learned the hard way. Also, I think it's just the understanding of that people within the company need to change and the way we work need to change and I've been putting so much effort into just building the organization from within. Um, that's been hard. I think one of the other things I've um, noticed is I've got so busy with building the business that I almost haven't driven the business forward. So, you know, hence why I've been struggling to make these videos and everything else is mainly because I don't find the time because I'm trying to fix everything so much that it's perfect almost from an operational point of view that if I was to start making content, build my personal brand, build a Gemflow brand, acquire lots of amazing new clients, that we are ready for it. So essentially being like working to be getting ready for the growth that we want to achieve as a business. Um, so yeah. Besides that, I ended up reading a book called Where Measure What Matters, which is uh, about OKRs. Um, the truth is I didn't actually know, I'd heard of it, never knew how you would meant to implement it. Been working with our chairman, Chris, to get that done. That's been really eye-opening because essentially everyone talks about having objectives, goals in, the, in your business or whatever you're trying to do. But if you have actually measure, if they're measurable, it changes everything. For example, saying grow social media would be an objective but you have actual key results against that. That is 10% growth in impressions, 10% growth in followers. There's some tangible ones. So when you meet with your teams and when you're like, okay, how are you guys performing? There should be something that you're reporting against instead of just someone just working hard. What I have found is building a business and scaling into the level that I have, that you'll have lots of people do amazing work and then everyone's very busy, but to ensure that you're all actually moving towards the same goal is actually harder than you think and putting some sort of framework in place is very useful to get there. So that's what I've been working on the past couple of months. But yeah, no, otherwise, um, very exciting. I think the other, on, on the plus side, what we can do as a company now is exceptional. The quality of work is exceptional and the way the creator economy has been born all around us is just crazy. Because imagine starting a business with a concept where most of the world did not see it. To now the whole world is seeing it and almost like people are like, oh, Build a community first, then see what happens. Like, yes, we know, audience first, been doing it for a very long time. It's just, it's amazing because we are ahead than, than most of the industry, but now the real work begins because we need to market and build the brand and let everybody know where we are and what's going on and what we know because some, we're one of the only people in the world that have actual sales information about creators' brands or how much they sell. You can be the biggest influencer marketing agency, but you don't have sales data because the brands have the sales data, not the influencer marketing agency, um, and so forth, so forth. So I think we're in a very unique position. Um, and yeah, very excited. Um, I'll uh, stop with the update there. Hope you like this video. It's been a bit of a long vlog. Um, videos will be back to normal weekly flow um, as it should be, because it's called week flow. And um, my podcast as well will be back every Sunday. That being said, hope you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.